Initial focus Ali was detailing in Oakland comes after two recent high-profile business closures there due to crime and the shooting death of an Oakland police officer who was killed while responding to a break-in at a cannabis business. Let us talk about what is happening in Oakland by welcoming Mayor Shang Tao to the Nine. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. What will the CHP officers be doing and where will they be concentrated in Oakland? Absolutely. I just want to say, first off, um, partnership is going to be key in regards to this regional approach. And I want to thank Governor Newsom for his hard work in collaborating with the city of Oakland. You know, the first thing is we have to work aggressively to focus on prevention, enforcement, and accountability. And so we know this is a criminal, these are criminal groups who are inflicting harm upon our community. And so with the CHP officers, a 900% increase, uh, that was a partnership and a request on my part. And of course, as you heard, community leaders. And so we're all working together for one goal, and that is to make Oakland safer. Uh, you know, you already had a list of where the governor will be deploying the CHP officers, and they'll be working in partnership with OPD. But if it's in your city, where would you or where will you concentrate those officers? Many people would say the Hagenberger corridor would be an obvious choice. Absolutely. You know, the Hagenberger, the Hagenberger corridor, uh, they, when we requested for the six CHP officers, some of the CHP officers were already in deployed in that area. Obviously, we're going to need more support there. We're going to need more support in our business districts, right? And so that's the Fruitvale. That's, you know, in Rockridge, that's downtown, that's in the Laurel. And then we're going to need some uh, traffic control uh, and high, pres uh, high presence and visibility in East Oakland. And so it, it, it's 120 extra CHP officers officers in the city of Oakland. So that's going to be very helpful when we talk about combating crime and ensuring that not, not only our community is safe, but ensuring that we are bringing people, criminals, to justice. I'll repeat some numbers that Ali just ran down because they are, for many people, troubling. Last year saw a 21% increase in reports of violent incidents in Oakland, a 38% increase in robberies, 23% jump in burglaries, 45% increase in auto thefts, more than 100 homicides in Oakland here for the fourth year in a row. Given all this, what do you think is happening in your city right now? You know, coming in uh, as the mayor last year, in the first year, I, I was asking the same thing. Why is it that we are seeing an increase in crime in the last few years? And so I did an audit immediately, and the audit showed that it was a breaking down a, the ceasefire strategy that the data shows it works. And that broke down in 2018. And so now we are really feeling the symptom of what happened, uh, what took place in the breaking down of ceasefire. Um, and of course, that was not under my administration. But with that being said, we are putting back together the ceasefire strategy that is going to be implemented. I also met with the White House meeting and had a meeting with their leadership with the newly established Office of Gun Violence Prevention. And so they will, they will be supporting the city of Oakland. So this is just one strategy. My strategy to crime in Oakland and public safety is, is three prong, right? It's going to be an accountable and robust police department. And that includes the partnership with CHP, Sheriff's Department and others. And then of course, we're going to have have to leverage technology and so we have to leverage our cameras we have to leverage you know the automated speed limit um, uh, in technology and then of course is violence prevention we have to also prevent crimes from happening and so that's a three-pronged strategy and you are now seeing the implementation of that strategy yes the first year we had to open the hood and uh, really see what was underneath it now we have uh, we're we've already diagnosed the problem and now we're moving forward with implementation of the solutions many people still waiting for a permanent head of OPD update us on the police chief search you know, uh, with the police chief search, I did decline the first list because I believe and I know that Oakland deserves the best police chief. As you can tell, we have a lot of issues here in the city of Oakland, and so not anybody can take on this issue. So with that being said, I'm going to continue to work with the police commission, who it is their job to actually vet the candidates and then send me a list of possible candidates that I can choose from. Do you have the first any timeline at all? Did not, the first list that they sent me did not uh, meet my standard, and the timeline that the police commission said is in March. In March. And so what happens if you get another list of three in March and you're not happy with those? You know, I'm going to be optimistic and say that I'm going to find my next chief in the next list. Is there someone you have in mind that could be a chief of Oakland police? 
Well, again, according to the charter of the city of Oakland, uh, that is uh, up to the police commission to actually vet the candidates, and then they will send over a list to me. And so I go off of that list. Right. So, but aside from that, you as mayor, you as a longtime Oaklander, is there someone you'd like to have? You know, I believe that if I had the opportunity, because the chief is going to be reporting to me and to the city administrator, that we should be the ones to hire and or fire the police chief. Um, and this is not currently the case right now. And so I'm going off of what it currently is the case right now. And the case is that I don't get to pick my police chief uh, off the bat. You know, I have to go off of what the police commission gives me. And so that's what we're operating under. Okay, let's talk about uh, some 911 response times here. There's been a slight improvement. Uh, as of December, half of all calls were picked up within the 15 second limit set by the State Office of Emergency Services, still far below the 90% requirement. Any updates as you work to fully staff and improve 911? You know, this is another uh, big issue coming in as the first, uh, my first year in office, we dedicated $2.5 million to a 911 dispatch. Look, I know as well, too, when I've called 911 in the past, I've gotten busy signal. That is not okay. And so I've invested into 911 dispatch, and I can tell you that by mid-February, we will have all of our vacancies in 911 dispatch filled except for four remaining seats. And that is a huge lift. Again, you did say, you know, the 50% call has gone up from 37%. That was back, you know, before we implementing this new procedures. And so, of course, it's not good enough, and we're going to continue to chip at this ice block to become better so that we can meet those state standards. But again, it went from 37% and now under this administration, it's up to 50%. And so we are getting stronger and better and we're going to continue to do that work. Okay, Mayor, real quick before we have to let you, how concerned are you about talk of a recall effort against you? You know, at this point right now, my record shows, um, and it's very strong. You know, as a council member, I was able to implement a lot of strategies to get more officers to come back to the city of Oakland. And as mayor, I have the most officers and ambassadors on our streets. We, again, we just talked about 911 response, and that has been implemented, and now we've increased the number of calls we picked up. You know, not just that, but I have a strong, uh, you know, legacy of having strong partnerships with gr different cities and uh, the government at the state level and the federal level. And so that's bringing in more resources. So what I say to that is that my record shows that I have the experience to continue forward. And, you know, well, that's what we're going to do because it's about Oakland and it's about Oaklanders. And we are coming together to ensure that we are kept safe, that we are uh, not just healthy, but we are prosperous in regards to our economic development. Do you think it's hard for some Oaklanders to square what you just said with the numbers coming from last year, your first year on the job, the 21 percent in violent incidents, 38 percent jump in robberies, 23 percent increase in burglaries, 45 percent more auto thefts? Is it hard for Oakland Oaklanders to accept the progress that you have made in the 911 center and some of the safe streets initiatives with some of the big things, if you will, that contribute to quality of life and frankly, the safety of people in this city. You know, I'm equally as frustrated, right? But it did not start under my watch. You know, crime, we have seen crime continuously increase over the last three years, if not four years. And so with that being said, of course, coming in as the new mayor, we had to diagnose the problem and we took that time to diagnose the problem. And now we're in the second year of implementation and we are optimistic that those numbers will start going down. You know, things, uh, you know, when the breaking down of ceasefire strategy was broken down, it took, it was over multiple years. And so with this being said, I think that it's a huge success to say that, you know, in my in the beginning of my second year as mayor of Oakland, that we're already seeing progress this month in January. We're seeing a huge decrease in our violent crimes already because we are re-implementing things that we know that work do working off of data and intel. And so that is the track record. The track record is that what I am doing is giving us the results that we are looking for, keeping okay. us safe. Mayor Shank.